Um, hello. Uh, today I'll be discussing linear geometry machines. Basically, uh, for you to easily understand how a DC machine works, uh, the easiest way is to understand the operating principles behind uh, linear DC machines. So, uh, in this topic, this is relatively short. I'll be discussing how a force is induced on a certain length of wire, how voltage is induced in a certain length of wire, and then how you how how does a linear DC machine work? So let's say for example, let's start with the force induced in a wire. Let's say for example that you have a wire of this length. Oops, where is that? Alam. No, wala. Um, how do I do this? Uh, this one. Ayan. Mm -hmm. Hila. Ayan. So, let's say for example that I have a wire of this length. So, I can induce a force on that wire by having a current flow on that wire within the presence of a certain magnetic field such that uh, the force induced in that wire can be calculated using this equation. Uh, it's basically just your current times the length of the wire uh, uh, cross product with your your magnetic field. So from your math, you learn that this equa that, that equation can be represented using this uh, equation as a function of sine. Oops. Where is that? Ay, yan where this theta here that's basically the angle between your current and your magnetic field so that's uh, well if you if you have a certain wire with certain length uh, of certain length and then you have that's in the pre you have a current flowing that wire under the presence of a magnetic field then you can easily induce a certain amount of force in that wire so that's that's basically how uh, force induction works now on voltage naman uh, your voltage is induced in a wire when for a certain length of wire for a certain length of wire that is under the presence of a magnetic field that wire is moving at a certain velocity so if that wire is moving at a certain velocity then and it is under a magnetic field so you can induce a you can induce a voltage on that wire now again from your math you know that this can also be represented as a function of sine and cos sine and cosine where your cross multiplication is your sine and your that that multiplication is your cosine so in terms of angle uh, your your sine from your cross multiplication is the sign of your angle between vo velocity and magnetic field whereas your cosine is basically the angle uh, is where your cosine is uh, the cosine of the angle between the cross product whatever is that direction and the uh, length of wire whatever is the direction of the uh, well uh, the orientation of the wire okay so yeah, that's that's how you perform. Uh, that's how you calculate for the voltage induced and the force induced. Uh, for the direction of the force, uh, you just use your right hand rule, and then for the polarity of the voltage, you use your right hand rule on on the V cross B. So wherever is the positive of the V cross B is pointing, so uh, that's also the positive of your uh, voltage polarity. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, let's go to linear DC machines. I'll skip these examples. Uh, I'll uh, I'll find time to do some of these examples. But this is very very straightforward. Isa substitute nyo lang shadow sa this equation. Okay. So I want you to appreciate uh, linear DC machines using those two uh, two principles the voltage induction and the force induction now okay so let's say that i have this uh setup 
Uh, this is a very very simple setup for for linear DC machine. So in this setup, I have a voltage source, and then I have a dime resistor here to represent all of the resistances within the within the system. It represents the resistance from the generator if it's not it's non ideal. It represents the resistance from the wire from this bar. It also represents the resistance of these connections if there are any resistance for that. So that's basically the uh, dime resistance. Okay, and then you have this wire that is not fixed. So this is a movable wire. Now, this wire, <coughs> excuse me, this wire, uh, this bar, sorry, I'll be using the term bar. This bar is under a magnetic field that is going into the page. It's the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, and then... Uh, yeah, that's basically your linear DC machine. Now, I <coughs> we have a switch here uh, just to switch on or off your your machine. Okay? Now, if we switch this on, if we close this circuit, you have a voltage here, you have a resistance here, then a closed connection here. So you basically have a closed loop here. And because you have a closed loop, Therefore, you have, you'll have current flowing through here, okay? And the idea is that uh, if you have a fl uh, current flowing here and it's under a magnetic field, so from earlier, as I have said, therefore, you'll have an induced force here. The direction of that force will be determined using your right-hand rule. In this case, that is going this way. And now, since there is a force going, uh, going that way, this will start to move this way. And therefore, it has a velocity of going this way. And now, you have a bar of a certain velocity under magnetic field. So now, this bar will have an induced, induced voltage. So basically, that's, that's linear this machine. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the operations of your linear this machine. Machine. So let's start with starting your your machine. Okay. So uh, let's talk about a linear DC machine at no load condition. Okay. At no load condition. Okay. So when you're starting a DC machine, so it's basically uh, at the moment that you switch close this close the switch or switch that on at the moment that you switch that on you don't have an induced voltage here because it is currently not moving it's not it's not yet moving so since it is not yet moving therefore there is no induced voltage and because there is no induced voltage when you close this here therefore you'll just have a close loop on the voltage the resistor and zero induced voltage such that we can get the current as I and VDC over R and th that is basically the highest current that you can attain from this circuit because when when you reach a time that is greater than zero after switching basically after switching because you now have a current here that is VDC over R therefore you will now have a certain force that you can get from your IL cross B. The direction of that force is going this way through your right hand rule, which will cause the bar to move, thus increasing its velocity. And what will happen when you have your uh, velocity on the bar? When you have that velocity now, you will now have a certain E induced here. So if we go back to this equation, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so before before going back to that equation, you will now have this velocity and then this magnetic field. And from right-hand rule, that will give you an induced voltage of this polarity. So, if you go back to this equation with this induced voltage, this polarity, therefore your, uh, your E induced after zero, at, after starting, will, now, will, will no longer be equal to zero. 
In fact, that will be VDC is equal to IR minus E induced. So, what will happen is that since you now have a minus in minus E induced here because it is no longer zero, your current will be V induced minus VDC minus E induced all over R. And this current is smaller than the current at starting. Than the current at starting. Well, because uh, it has lower numerator. Now, since it's smaller, it has a smaller current now, therefore it has a smaller, smaller force, and then a smaller, uh, well, if you have a smaller force, therefore your, your velocity will decrease. That will decrease the E induced, therefore, if your, your E induced is decreased, therefore your numerator will increase again, and then your current will increase again, therefore your force will increase again, therefore your velocity will increase again, E induced will increase again, current will decrease again and so on and so forth until such time that you reach a steady state value where this is your this is your steady state value your your bar will no longer uh, accelerate if it's no longer accelerating because it will reach a constant speed eh? as you can see there is a pattern there there is a pattern there na uh by induced voltage your your induced voltage decreases therefore your force increases ah your current increases increasing the force increasing the velocity uh decreasing the uh increasing the induced voltage decreasing the, uh, the current and so on and so forth until until such time that you now have a steady state velocity where your acceleration is zero now if your acceleration is, is zero that doesn't mean that your bar is no longer moving it just tells you that your bar is const is moving at a constant constant velocity and when your acceleration is zero therefore the net force on the bar is equal to zero and if the net force is equal to zero therefore the current is equal to zero and that will happen when your vdc is equal to e induced so so yeah, we can easily equate the uh, VDC to e induced at, at no load. This will be the steady state value of the induced voltage. Then from here, you can get, well, this e induced is equal to VBL. So if you want to solve for the voltage, then you just divide VDC by VBL. So that's this equation. Okay, so that's basically how your your linear DC machine work uh, when it is in in no load. Uh, so this is the graph of the voltage current induced voltage and uh, velocity current induced voltage and induced force. So as you can see, uh, you start with the highest current attainable. It's basically VDC over R, and then as uh, as the machine reaches its steady state value, it tends to have zero current because of the zero net force. Oh, of the zero induced force. It's the same as this one. You have the highest force at the start. Well, it's because of the highest current. But as you reach the steady state value, that force decreases until you reach a steady state value of uh, zero acceleration or zero induced force. Now, uh, at starting, your induced voltage is zero and, the, and it grows until such time that it reaches a steady state value of VDC or the voltage uh, or the input voltage. And it's the same for the for the velocity. You start with zero velocity and then you reach a steady state velocity of VDC over BL. So that is no load operation and, uh, and yeah, okay, so that's no load operation and that's how you start your your DC machine from uh, from cold start to a steady state uh, constant speed value. Okay, so now let's try to load your machine 
in this case, uh, let's try loading your machine such that your machine will act as a as a motor. So as you can see from the diagram, uh, we will be applying a certain force that is opposite the direction of the velocity. Take note that from the previous example, the velocity of this bar will pro will go this way. Now let's try applying a certain force that is uh, opposite that direction. So let's assume that your machine is running at no, no load condition. Therefore, it uh, let's assume that it reaches its steady state value. It's already in this in this state. It's already in this state. Okay. Okay, so let's say that it is uh, initially running at no load condition. It's at steady state, uh, no load, no load operation, and then uh, we try we introduce a force that is opposite the direction of the velocity. So we introduce a force, a force from zero. The force is now zero. We introduce a force, okay, that is opposite the direction of the velocity. Okay, so since your bar is, well, since your bar is initially going this way, if you introduce this force that is opposite that direction, therefore, your bar will, will slow down. So, it's no longer in steady state because your bar is now experiencing uh, negative acceleration. So, it is, no, it is now slowing down. And because of that slowing down, therefore, your induced will be will decrease. Take note that before we introduce this value, your induced is equal to VDC. Now, if induced decreases, therefore, it is now less than VDC. And if it is less than VDC, there will be current present here. There will be a current present here, and then you will repeat the. You we, you will repeat the process until it until it reaches a steady state value. So when will this steady state value happen? Uh, it will reach its steady state again when your your bar is no longer experiencing an acceleration or it is running at constant speed. So that means the net force present in the bar is equal to zero. And when will that net force be equal to zero? That is, if you have this F load. And if you have a certain induced force, if you have an induced force that is opposite in direction of F load but equal in magnitude, therefore this bar will experience a net force of zero and that is at its steady state value. So what will happen here is you will now have an induced force which, which is equivalent to this, to this F load. So for for a loaded machine, your induced force will not be equal to zero at uh, at steady state value. In fact, it will have a certain positive value that is equal to F load because uh, you you want to equate that F load so that you have a net force in the bar that is equal to zero for you to have a zero acceleration. Now because of that induced force that is not equal to zero but is equal to F load, therefore you also have a current that is not equal to, to zero. Take note we started at zero again because you started at the steady state condition that is no load. Now because of the uh, application of the F load, therefore you will now have a current here. Now uh, how about the how about the induced voltage? So the induced voltage from no load steady state is equal to VDC. If you introduce an F load that is opposite the direction of velocity, uh, the bar will go slower. And because it goes slower, therefore, it will still have a value of induced voltage. But that induced voltage will be lower than VDC. So it decreases. Okay? And because of... Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I have already established this, that your velocity will decrease because your f induced is uh, acting in uh, opposite direction of the velocity. 
So that is uh, if you have a linear DC machine acting as a motor. And then another one is if you have a linear DC machine acting as a as a generator. Now in this case, uh, instead of applying a load of uh, a, a load force that is opposite in direction of the velocity, let's apply a force that is in the same direction as as the velocity. Uh, so this one is quite interesting because if you apply a force mm -hmm. that is uh, in the same direction as the velocity, what will happen is your bar, your bar will accelerate. So it will have a higher velocity as as of, uh, in contrast with its operation when it is a motor because if it's a motor it will have a lower velocity if it's a generator it will have a higher velocity and because it has a higher velocity therefore what will happen is that your e-induce will be greater than vdc and what's interesting here is because if this is greater than vdc if this has higher potential than vdc the direction of the current flow will be going this way so so balik na ngayon uh, from before your your source here is supplying current here when it is applying uh, when it is acting as a motor but when it is acting as a generator this induced voltage here is supplying current here so now you have a uh, current coming out from the conductor from the bar that is moving uh, okay so it's it's basically the same analysis it's just a uh, different direction in vo in current such that if you graph the the current so as you can see neg nasa negative uh, as you can see nasa negative uh ano tawag dito nasa negative axis tayo ng current because nagpalit yung direction ng current and then uh, your velocity increases because you apply a force that is uh, in the same direction as the velocity. So, be, uh, so the velocity will increase, and because of that increase in velocity, the induced induced voltage will also increase. That such that it is greater than VDC. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it's the same analysis as. Uh, DC motors, uh, you will reach a steady state value when the net force experienced by the the machine, the bar, when the net force experienced by the bar is equal to zero. That means you have an induced force that is equivalent to the applied force. So I'll be using the same uh, the same uh, what do you call this uh, variable here. So. I think, I, I don't know, orito. So the induced force will be equal to the applied force, but opposite in direction. So if the applied force is going this way, the induced force is going this way. So so I, uh, I, I don't know, I, I think I I included the wrong graph dito sa part na to. Uh, I'll probably check, yeah. Okay. So that's that's basically how you analyze a DC machine. Ganun lang siya simple. You just use uh, the principle of induction of voltage and induction of current. Okay, so this is your um, power converted. So basically it's the power at the bar. Uh, you can easily compute for the power at the bar because well if you compute for the power at the bar it is just the induced voltage here times whatever is the current flowing there and then of course if it is acting as a motor or generator if it's acting as a motor or generator the current there is no longer equal to zero same is for the voltage well the voltage is not is not equal to zero unlike when it is in no load as you can see from from before from no load operation if it's in no load uh, therefore you have a current that is equal to zero at steady state so the power converted there is equal to zero because power is just voltage times current but when the current is zero therefore the power is zero so in this case if it's acting as a motor you don't have a zero current you don't have zero voltage therefore you have power 
at the bar for generator you don't have a zero voltage zero you don't have zero current therefore you have power at the bar and that power at the bar can be translated into mechanical power in ter that is in terms of the induced force and the velocity okay so yeah i guess that's it for linear dc machines so uh i'll be back for uh rotational dc machines okay so yeah oops